Hey, Alpha fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today on Alpha Commission, of course, we're going to go over the uh, massive drop on the Bitcoin chart uh, as we do see that uh, volatility play that was building up on the uh, four hour that we discussed in the last episode uh, beginning to play out, and that is bleeding into some of the uh, middle time frames. And so it could be uh, quite a serious uh, drop. Um, as you guys can see in the last video, just for some uh, truth in advertising, uh, let's see how we did leave that off. And then I will have a bearish momentum, uh, you know, bias based upon a number underneath 16,680, which I do think is front runnable to the downside. And sure enough, you know, we uh, went right up to that number and then we turned back down. So uh, again, like we are bearish underneath 16,680. And I will just be uh, solidly bearish if we break under 16,520. Uh, that also aligns with this uh, bottom edge of our our, uh, wedge here so uh, you know this all makes sense guys like if so there you have it uh, just for some transparency there I did a uh, call out two numbers very specifically to watch out for 16,680 if we got rejections there we were likely to be going down and uh, if we actually crossed 16,520 that was almost guaranteed that we would be breaking down now did I give you any type of heads up of what the intensity of this might be well let's just uh, take a look uh, guys, uh, not much more to say than that. You know, if I pop over to the uh, daily EMA, as you can see, we're underneath the uh, four EMA, which is uh, very bearish. You can see we can have catastrophic results when we're underneath the uh, four EMA on the daily. We're underneath the uh, nine on the daily. We were just uh, completely rejected from this positive area. And so I'm not that uh, positive right now uh, about this uh, play. If we do look at the weekly, of course, it just looks like a disaster. There is this... Okay, guys, so there you have it. So I was talking about how uh, we looked like a, a disaster on the weekly and then on the uh, smaller time frames, of course, that we were just in danger of a catastrophic drop. So I hope that uh, the Alpha Fam heeded those warnings. Uh, these uh, Alpha Momentum pools that I make for you, they're no joke. You do get rejected from the bottom of them. And look at that compression to the downside. Now, you could say that this looked like an acute accumulation wedge being put in here but when you're underneath the alpha momentum pools okay that's your cue that this is probably going to be a hard rejection this wasn't a um this wasn't a bullish uh, accumulation wedge this little kind of triangle shape here between the yellow line and the white lines of the bottoms of these boxes this was in that kind of a dead space that no momentum area underneath my momentum pools and so again it was front runnable to the downside and while you know nothing is 100 percent uh the hit rate on this is extremely high and the alpha fam is just killing it with this new strategy and so unfortunately, uh, guys, as you can see, the new momentum pool for the day, which is valid for the next 24 hours, does start considerably lower. This is just a massive dump. And so, uh, you know, of course, the uh, momentum was just stretched out to the downside. I do have to take some liberties when I adjust my uh, alpha momentum scale over here so that I can give you some signals so that I can try to look out for the uh, alpha fam uh, during these hard times. But of course, uh, you know, nothing is perfect. And so uh, while this can uh, be highly reliable, uh, the closer that these levels are together, the more we get stretched out, it just uh, it just becomes a little bit more certain. There's a lot more guesswork in between these large swaths of space here. Um, however, uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, bearish and the solid bearish levels are pretty close together. And if you're wondering what this purple box is here, that's actually a CME gap. If you go over to the professional exchanges, uh, Bitcoin on the 24-hour exchanges, for example, Coinbase, which I'm on the four-hour chart on Coinbase right now, and a buy and KuCoin, all of these 24-7 exchanges, they just dumped hard before uh, the professional exchanges, the CME ch exchanges, uh, even opened up. And so there is a, a gap there in the chart. Now, these gaps do tend to be filled over time. And so it's just something to take a look at. 
That's why I make sure to uh, track those on there. Now, uh, as long as we are underneath uh, the top of that gap, I will have a bearish uh, bias around uh, under 16,370. I'm going to be solidly bearish under 16,250. And uh, we do have another oh no anyway target, which is uh, pretty much these candles over here, somewhere around 15,790-ish, right? S uh, 15,800-ish, right? If we lose that area, then we're likely to be going down to perhaps 15,500, and then we can talk about lower targets uh, if we uh, reach there. But uh, I am glad that the Alpha Fam had just a couple days of heads up as you uh, were uh, looking over the Alpha Momentum pools. I bet that saved a lot of people's butts because a lot of people might have been thinking that we were going to test some higher levels, and uh, you know, the uh, Alpha momentum strategy here, which is what uh, I'm trying to add to the community. Uh, everybody is doing their own thing. Some people are trading with the EMAs primarily. Some people are using FIBs. Some people are using like a FIB circles or, uh, you know, these different type of exotic strategies. And I'm trying to bring uh, momentum to the community. So please uh, help me share the uh, channel if you do enjoy this content and if you have been protected by it which I do hope that I've proven to you. Now, we do have a uh, two-day projection over here, although we have the rest of the day to try to get back inside of this momentum pool. In other words, this could have just been a fake out, and then it gets on top of the uh, alpha momentum pool, and then we uh, overcome this uh, bullish level at $17,040, and then we would have the chance to pop up. But, uh, you know, if we uh, don't do that to in the next 24 hours, then uh, my projection, which is just a looser estimate would be that we would probably gain a significant amount of momentum. Again, above that 16,250 level, uh, it's just enough to kind of perhaps bounce us up. And uh, especially if we get above that 16,370, that that'll be a kind of front runnable, at least to the neutral area. We get over that neutral area and probably we can squeak it out to this uh, bullish zone. Uh, but we really will have to be over 17,040 in order to, uh, you know, have a chance to reach the top of this uh, pool and uh, gain an extra level of momentum that can take us to this solid bullish. Now, there is some differential between the top of the two-day projection and this bullish uh, uh, projection here, and that's just because, of course, this is an estimate, whereas this is today's reading. So you understand there's a differential between the two-day estimate and, the, uh, and today's uh, actual reading. So guys, uh, there you have it. Uh, if we do get above 17,250, then maybe in the next couple of days we could get a, a nice uh, pop-up. But again, we are of a long way from that. And currently we are just a falling. Now we are getting a little bit of recoil. You can see that we did wick down to the candle closes, the four hour candle closes uh, from over here. And then also on, uh, you know, uh, November. So all the way back here on early November and then mid November. So we are bouncing right off that area. But uh, is this very firm support? I don't know. Right now we have a little bit of a, a triple bottom and that can offer support. So don't don't be a perma bear, but you do want to just keep your eye out for these levels. Just like we had to make sure that we got rejected off of the bottom of the momentum pools, which we did. You see this wick that just pushed us all the way back down underneath the momentum pool. And then the next day we got uh, rejected from the exact same level. And then we broke down from this uh, support. Every time you break down one of these levels, we actually bounced back up to retest it and rejected it again, right? And so every time you uh, reject off of one of these levels, uh, you're likely to be losing a chunk of momentum, and uh, so we will lose some momentum uh, once again uh, by uh, missing this candle if we break below this candle. And then again, we can uh, see perhaps uh, 15,500 ish, if not uh, lower, all the way down to perhaps 14,000, uh, you know, 12,000, these type of areas. Um, Guys, I think that that pretty much does cover uh, the price action and the momentum. If we take a look at the uh, volatility that I was talking about, this is what I was warning you about a couple days ago. We were starting to spike up on the four hour, um, which was really the front runnable signal that I did give the Alpha Fam, where I was saying, look, guys, like we're pushing down. The uh, four hour is kind of maxing out and it's turning around. There's likely to be a four hour 
hour volatility push. And I said, we couldn't really be certain about the other time frames, but within a day, uh, you did see uh, the six hour, the eight hour, look at that, just start screaming. The 12 hour just started screaming, uh, you know, absolutely just a wailing here and uh the uh, day uh the daily is uh, still in a contraction phase so here's the possibility for that kind of sneaky um you know that sneaky kind of fake out move is potentially coming up here now we only see this um daily move about uh three-fourths of the way complete and i'm sure if i go to the two day um, you're going to see that this one is actually pinching shut. And so there is something weird going on between the uh, two-day and the daily versus all of the lower time frames. And so the lower time frames, the volatility is pushing it down, but uh, the two-day and the daily are saying, hmm, we might want to make a change pretty soon. Now, volatility is direction neutral, so we can't say if that's going to be just an extra thrust to the downside or if it's going to be that fake out move that takes us back up. But what we can say is that we want to we want to be on the lookout for when uh, this type of uh, Bollinger uh, band uh, with percentile actually makes a, uh, you know, just kind of a little boomerang at the bottom here, because at that moment it could determine, uh, you know, where our volatility is going to push us for perhaps the the next uh, couple weeks or at least a uh, couple days and then if we just go ahead and go over to the weekly you can see that uh, we did have a little bit of a, a volatility fake out on the weekly as uh, probably this is just the FTX nonsense and all of that right and so just some type of confusion there but we are starting to expand on the uh, weekly and unfortunately we're expanding uh, in price action to the downside and so if the weekly has anything to say about it it would say perhaps continuation uh, to the downside. I don't think we're going to get another fake out, right? Uh, you know, you can see that usually it's just one. There's a case where there's like a couple of them here, but it's really wasn't at the bottom. It was at the middle area where it was kind of just determining its direction. And so um, I feel like there may be a little bit more of a push here to go. If we look at the monthly, it's just nonsensical. Uh, look at the two week, you can see that we are in a contraction phase only about halfway through. And so uh, if we consider uh, that uh, the two week is a, a pretty, at least we can make sense of it compared to the monthly, is a pretty high time frame to be looking at, then um, you can see that we are uh, contracting to the downside, which does suggest that at some point this contraction is going to be over and that the uh, the Bitcoin chart will turn around and expand to the upside uh, probably fairly significantly but we do have a ways to go and that contraction only started in uh, it looks like a uh, uh, September there. And so, you know, it could take another month or two. We don't know exactly before this thing decides to uh, flip around again. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a really weird, uh, you know, time frame, which is this uh, six day. Now the six day has only really had uh, two points in its life where it has had a screaming volatility. And right now is one of those points. Now, when was the other time? It was right before uh, Bitcoin took off from uh, essentially from this point down here of um you know 10,000 bucks when it went screaming all the way up to $65,000. So guys, uh you know, this volatility is suggesting that we could get a power move similar to this uh coming up uh just by looking at this really awkward unusual time frame that I hunted down for you guys just to uh, deliver the alpha for uh, the alpha fam over here and you know, we might see some kind of like little kind of curve fake out maybe like a bounce back up. You you know, if we're headed to the downside right now, maybe, uh, you know, or maybe this is a fake out to the downside and then we curve back up. Not sure, but we are going to be watching uh, what this signal does. If it does continue to expand, then potentially this thing could be expanding price action to the downside the same way that it expanded price action to the upside. Again, guys, this is volatility. It's direction neutral. Just because we hit these lows when we went from 10,000 to, uh, you know, uh, 65,000 doesn't mean that this one's going to take us to the moon. It could mean this one's going to reset us from this one, and that could be a disaster uh, to the downside. So we are going to have to monitor the situation. I do like that signal on the uh, on the uh, six-day. The five-day, 
is a little bit less obvious here. And so uh, we can see another signal on the uh, five day, uh, which was uh, back here on, uh, what was this? Uh, right here before this uh, utter collapse, right? This utter collapse um, in uh, 2018. So the five day actually has a very similar signal, which was just before this just devastating uh, catastrophe on the Bitcoin chart. And so both the uh, five day and the six day are telling us that these massive blue signals uh, come before huge, huge, huge moves. This one to the upside, this one to the downside on the five day, and then the six day, uh, very similar. Okay, this was uh, to the upside, and this one we seem to be pushing to the downside. So I am going to keep monitoring these higher time frame uh, volatility moves for us. Uh, if we do uh, just kind of uh, get out of here uh, really quick, we can see that we are just, uh, you know, pretty uh, bearish uh, just on every kind of indication. And in fact, uh, I did some analysis of, uh, you know, our, uh, you know, our positions for uh, all of these different type of indicators from back here in 2018 and our current uh, location. And I did put on my uh, Twitter that, uh, and also in the uh, Discord, so if you do uh, look in the Discord, you can find it there as well. I did put that the uh, setup of the indicators looked almost identical on the uh, three day. So the three day chart and the uh, indications did suggest ahead of time that we were likely to have a, a massive dump because all of these signals were basically um, symmetrical with each other with our current uh, setups. And so uh, that did give me a little bit of a, a head, you know, a heads up that, hey guys, like maybe, maybe we should pull out before this thing has a catastrophic dump. So it is worth it to, uh, you know, join the uh, Discord. If if you are going to watch this channel, you know, hey, you know, you're spending your time on that. You might as well join the Discord. The uh, link, the uh, group discussion is uh, in the uh, link in the um, in the description of the video. And please do join in. The bear market is the best time to be part of a group because you can start to talk about what coins you would like to get into, what coins might be dying and may never come back. You can understand what you might want to accumulate at the bottom of the market because, of course, uh, crypto is going to recover and all of this, you know, will come back, but a significant amount of, uh, that is uh, the uh, business, the industry will come back, but, um, you know, not all of the coins will come back, not all of the, uh, you know, uh, not all of the exchanges will come back. And so you do want to just be part of that conversation and contribute what you're hearing, what you understand. Maybe from your business perspective, you know, and because maybe you're in finance or maybe you're in banking, maybe you're understanding what's going on with the uh, recession or uh, politics that may change things. And so by just putting all of our heads together, we can be much more prepared to scoop up some, uh, you know, very uh, low prices and then just kind of, uh, you know, hang tight for the uh, bear market until inflation, you know, and the uh, recession you know, reach a, a critical point where the Fed decides that they need to intervene again, and then the money uh, starts flowing again, and, you know, we we can just do extremely, extremely well. Uh, guys, I'm kind of rambling here because I'm thinking of what else could I show you, but we are just basically just dropping in the charts, um, you know, like a, a lead balloon, but I think I can throw on the uh, EMAs and just show you, you know, that we are just incredibly uh, bearish here. We're extremely under the uh, the uh, four EMA, even on the one hour. And so that means that just on every time scale, the four hour, we're going to be under the nine. On the 12 hour, we're going to be under the nine and the four here. On the daily, we're going to be under the nine and the four. And just to being underneath the nine and the four, especially if you're under the four, it's just uh, it's just a lot of potential for catastrophic drops, right? And so we are just seeing this could continue to the downside the same way that when we were under the uh, nine and the four EMA, uh, we were just, we did just have this uh, catastrophic drop. If you do want to copy my EMAs, these are the colors that I use. Uh, these are the uh, inputs that I use and I use the uh, eight EMA and the uh, five EMA. You can probably get away with just the uh, nine EMA, the 21 EMA, and then maybe a, a 50 
and a, a 200 if you just want to have like a nice set of uh, EMAs. But if you uh, wish to uh, play around with them, these are the ones that I use. A couple different groups use similar colors so we can kind of coordinate so we can more easily communicate with each other. And if you do join the Discord and the uh, discussion, then it would be good to uh, sync up some of these uh, colors just to communicate better. But uh, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. This episode's been long enough. I will keep you updated if I see anything changing in the charts. Just wanted to make a quick video to uh, show that you're not alone, uh, that, uh, you know, we were uh, working with you as hard as we could right over here at the uh, Alpha Fam to uh, try to save, uh, you know, all of our members' uh, butts, you know, from this dump. And uh, guys, the Alpha Momentum pools uh, worked. They just, they just protected us uh, once again. And uh, they are suggesting just to some continuation here. Don't even think about the upside unless we get above 16,250 and probably above 16,370 just to save yourself some uh, heartache. And if you do just want to uh, wait until price action is above 17,000, if this thing starts uh, bouncing, then that's also probably a, uh, you know, not a uh, unintelligent move, right? It, it, that, that can make sense. Um, however, if we do start breaking this oh no anyway line uh, underneath uh, 15,790, 15,500, then there could be considerably uh, more drop to uh, come. And we're really going to want to talk about uh, where could be some possible buy points uh, once we do have that type of a drop, because it is going to be in just an incredibly, incredibly good value value area on the chart. Uh, I am in log already, so I think uh, log scale, so I think that I can just uh, throw on the uh, alpha uh, origin channels if I do have that here. Uh, let's see, yep, I do have my alpha origin channels. And so you can see that if we just uh, take a look, you know, at the uh, chart, and let me turn off some of these signals. Uh, th 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 there we go. And let's flip over to the day. You can see that we are just uh, headed down on the uh, alpha origin channels here. Now, guys, uh, this channel, these channels have been just keeping us incredibly safe uh, during the entire uh, bear market, all the way from the very top, where I suggested that we had left this uh, type of a uh, bullish zone, so it's a good uh, place to sell around uh, 59,000, uh, around that $60,000 area. And then, um, of course, we uh, went into these, uh, you know, just kind of critical support areas and then into the capitulation under the yellow line, the second capitulation under the uh, white line, which was pretty much the same as what we had seen before in previous cycles. And then we went all the way to the bloodline. Now, the bloodline was supposed to be a, a potential uh, first DCA. Like uh, people were DCAing in like all the way up the top, like every dip, which was freaking insane. But uh, we did have a conversation about this and we did determine that there was uh, some type of a macro cycle going on where most likely, um, you know, the super cycle would be playing out perhaps like this. And so we don't know exactly the shape that the market is going to take, especially since, uh, you know, the FTX just uh, had an extra catastrophe that just brought us way below that bloodline. But uh, you can see that there are these uh, different diagonals where we could consider to a DCA in on this a dotted green line, which I call touching the grass down here. And then there's also the a solid green line below that. So, you know, uh, if we work our way down to 11,000, maybe 14,000, and then even at this uh, $16,000 area, you know, these really are DCA type levels. Uh, I personally don't DCA. I don't try to convince anyone to invest in anything in crypto. It's just so high risk. Uh, I'm not about giving calls or, you know, doing those things. Everything that I do is just for practice, just to become a better trader for myself. And if my friends and family who like to follow along with me can become better traders too, then that's what we want to happen so that we can just absolutely kill it in the next uh, bull market. It. But until then, you do have to realize that we are getting down at those lower levels that historically speaking, on this type of a diagonal growth curve, which is actually a parabolic logarithmic, um, you know, growth curve, uh, that we are at relatively good 
values, especially each level lower that we go. Now, if we do lose our current level, I would expect us, uh, just to based upon the uh, alpha origin channels, I would expect us to perhaps drop down as low as uh, 13,000 here, uh, perhaps even uh, 11,000. And then should we lose a level after that, uh, perhaps around that 9,500-ish level, and should we lose that level, then I could see uh, 7,000 or maybe even some wick to uh, 5,000. But uh, guys, we are really stretching out this cycle chart uh, now that we've broken solidly uh, through this middle section, we are really in the lower one-third of the uh, alpha momentum channels here, which means that we are touching the grass, and uh, who knows when this chart could just turn around. Who knows when we could have a sudden spike. Uh, we don't just move in like one direction, right? There's always going to be this kind of heartbeat pattern that always happens, right? And so if you just think about that in kind of a backwards direction, you know, we're going to have, even if we continue to go down, we're going to have pumps, right, uh, until we eventually turn around. So, um, you know, taking some risk at some of these alpha origin channel uh, levels, uh, just from a trading perspective, isn't necessarily that bad because usually we do get some type of a pump to retest the uh, breakdown. And I'll show you what that looks like. Obviously here we got a pump up and then we retested it and broke down. You know, we hit this white level and then we pumped back up to try to grab this uh, blue level, but we ended up breaking back down. We hit the uh, bloodline, we pumped back up and tested this blue line, right? So we're always breaking down and then retesting, breaking down and then retesting. And so, you know, if we continue down and then, you know, there could be a pump that ends up retesting something. And so uh, really, you know, uh, again, like uh, I can't I can't give you financial advice. I don't know the best place to buy. We could have turned around here. We could have had a mid cycle bounce, but we didn't. OK, we just didn't. That's just how it went, because the FTX basically basically got liquidated by Binance. And so that liquidation just killed any chance for kind of a mid-cycle bounce like we had here. And so we're just going underneath the bloodline and we just have to consider where might be our next uh, kind of uh, tradable areas. Of course, it was where we uh, hit here. And the next one is, uh, you know, somewhere down here, probably, you know, in this in this region uh, between this uh, 14,000 to, uh, let's just say, you know, let's just give it until like 10,000, right? So guys, uh, again, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, that was your alpha for the day. Uh, stay safe and happy trading.